All right, so I will give uh, a short introduction to uh, curve-based crypto. Uh, then I will talk about uh, basically a top-down approach of our implementation. So I'll give some info about our uh, signature and key exchange scheme, um, then go down to the building blocks, so the Jacobian uh, and the Kummer uh, arithmetic. And finally, uh, some details about the finite field arithmetic. Uh, and I will conclude by uh, comparing our results to the state-of-the-art implementations. Um, so a short executive summary. Um, we are basically the first software-only uh, implementation of hyperelliptic curve crypto on microcontrollers. Um, in particular, the first to do a signature scheme uh, based on Coomer surfaces. Um, and we show significant improvements both in terms of speed, uh, size, uh, and also stack usage uh, compared to other implementations. Um, so everything I will be talking about is available on my website, um, which is displayed here. So feel free to download it and have a look. Um, uh, right. So for an introduction into curve-based crypto, uh, most of you will have heard about elliptic curve crypto, um, maybe not so much about hyperelliptic curve crypto. So I will talk about both of them uh, here. Um, so basically what we can do is we can classify curves by their genus. Um, and in this case, we just care about genus uh, one, which is elliptic curve crypto, um, and then genus two, in which case we talk about hyperelliptic curve crypto. Um, and why do we care about this for crypto purposes? Well, basically the idea is that uh, an elliptic curve gives us a group, uh, namely we can take the points of the elliptic curve and we can define a nice group operation, which can then use in uh, cryptographic protocols which rely on groups. So, uh, uh, Schnorr signatures or Diffie-Hellman can be done using groups. Um, and the same is true for, um, for Jacobians of hyperelliptic curves. So in this case, we don't take the points of an hyperelliptic curve, but we have to do something a bit more generic. Um, but the details are not important. That the, the idea is that we still have a group. And uh, with a group, we have basically two operations, or one operation, which is addition. Um, and a subset of that is like doubling operations. Um, and it's very easy to see that we can combine these operations into some sort of scalar multiplication uh, by using some double and add uh, or a Montgomery ladder kind of technique. Um, and using scalar multiplication, we can very easily build Diffie-Hellman. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, you do one scalar multiplication on one side and one on the other side, and you somehow combine it into, into a key. Um, Moreover, for signature schemes, we have Schnorr type signatures for ECDSA or EDDSA, um, which basically rely on scalar multiplications. But oh, I also want to emphasize that these rely on generic group additions as well. Um, um, and that will be important for basically my next slide. Um, and I also want to say that these operations on Jacobians are generally um, not as easy to make fast as the operations on their. Uh, elliptic curves, and also not as easy to make uh, constant time, which is uh, important for side channel attacks, of course. Um, so since elliptic curves have been studied so much, there's also a lot of research on how to make these things fast. Um, and one idea is basically to take the points on the curve and then identify points with their inverses. Um, and in practice, what that means is that we uh, can represent these points by two finite field elements, x and y. Um, and basically, we can just drop the y coordinate. Um, and by doing that, we lose the group structure, um, which looks like it could be a problem. But we still have these operations, which are called x double and x adds, which kind of salvage the situation. Because we can still use these operations to create a scalar multiplication routine. Um, and that's what we need for Diffie-Hellman. So key exchange is still OK, since we still have scalar multiplication. Um, on the other hand, by losing the group structure, we lose generic additions. So we lose the, um, we lose the ability to do Schnorr type signatures. So uh, for example, Curve to 519 uses these X only operations to very, very fast key exchange. Um, but for the Ed DSA signatures, they would move to the Ed to 5519. So the, the twisted Edwards form, uh, which is kind of an equivalent curve. Um, Right, so why do I talk about all this elliptic curve? Because it's kind of easy and um, it's used a lot. And the Coomer case is really close to that. So instead of working with these points, we now work with Jacobian elements. Um, and we can do the same thing. We can identify elements with their inverses. Um, and again, we destroy the group structure. But 
as same as for elliptic curves, we are still left with these x double and x hat operations, um, which allows us to do uh, scalar multiplication, which again allows us to do key exchange. So key exchange on Coomer surfaces is kind of easy. Um, but again, by destroying the group structure, we lose the ability to do signatures using Coomer surfaces. Um, so summarized, um, we can either use elliptic curves or, their, or Jacobians, and we can do key exchange and signatures, um, or we can go down to the Coomer varieties, uh, which gives us a very fast, a much more efficient and easy constant time key exchange, but we lose signatures. Um, so this was basically the situation for uh, up until a couple of months ago, um, and now there's a new result, which was presented last week at SAC um, by Chung, Costello, and Smith, where they they say, you know, you cannot do signatures on the Jacobian, but you can still abuse this fast, efficient Kummer arithmetic um, uh, for this. Um, and the idea is really that, you know, you start with a point on the Jacobian, and instead of doing all these Jacobian operations, you really map down to the Kummer, um, you do all your efficient operations there, and then you somehow recover to a point on the Jacobian. Um, and the point is that the Coomer operations are really easy to get time constants, and they are the key dependent operations. So if we can somehow get this project and recover up and down uh, reasonably efficient, then this will uh, benefit a lot in an implementation. Um, so what has been done so far? Um, so on larger platforms, there are some implementations of Coomer services. Um, so they're doing Coomer key exchange, um, so by Bernstein and some others. Um, and they get really good results. Basically, they're only being trumped by the 4Q implementation by Costello and Longa, um, who use endomorphisms on elliptic curves. Um, and for microcontrollers, the situation is that there's really not much uh, hyper elliptic curve based crypto. There are some uh, implementations which use hardware, um, but for software only implementations, there's not much there. Uh, so basically, we, this leads to two questions. First one is, how well would Coomer-based key exchange do on the microcontroller? And there the answer is reasonably predictable. There's no reason to believe why they wouldn't do well uh, or as well as on large platforms, also because the fields are generally smaller than the elliptic curve case, so you could maybe even expect them to do much better. Um, but the second more interesting question is, how do these Coomer-based signature schemes uh, perform? So they have really never been implemented anywhere. And there's this proposal by uh, Chung, Costello, and Smith, um, but f it's really not obvious how this translates to a real-world implementation. Um, so that's uh, the, the main uh, question that we want to answer here. Um, right, so what did we implement? Um, so this is our signature schemes, and there's a lot of stuff on this slide. I would urge you not to try to read everything. This is basically um, a Schnorr signature. It's very close to the at the SA uh, with some minor modifications. Um, so what we need is this public generator, a point on the Jacobian, um, and we need some kind of hash function, so our, our implementation uses shake128. Um, we need a secret key and a message, uh, and we get three functions. So we get a key generation function, a signing function, and a verification function. Um, and the first thing I want to point out is that these elements are really on the Jacobian. As I said, without Jacobians, it's hard to do signatures, so these elements really have to be on the Jacobian. Um, but the actual work is still done through the Coomer. So, you know, it looks like this stuff is all going on in Jacobian, but underneath, we are just all the time mapping down to the Coomer, doing the hard work there, and then recovering back to the Jacobian. Um, and finally, by going through the Coomer surface, we kind of uh, uh, lose the opportunity to get efficient batch verification. Um, and since we already lose batch verification, we may as well do some optimizations in the signature size. So this was already proposed by, uh, by Schnorr. Um, so instead of sending over some points, we can send over a hash of the point, which has only half the size, uh, which, which reduces our signature size from 512 bits to 384 bits, um, which is quite nice. Um, and also, this means that in verification, one of our scalars is a bit smaller, so we also get some, some speed optimizations there. Um, and finally, uh, this is not very apparent on the slide, but there's a lot of compression going on of Jacobian points here, um, which is not really relevant at the moment. Um, so the key exchange scheme is, is much simpler. So for this, we can just do stuff on the Coomer surface. Uh, so our generator is just a point on the Coomer, and we have some secret key 
basically we have two operations which are actually the same. Um, so we can take some point, which is either the public generator, and we multiply by the secret, in which case we have some key gen. Um, or we can take some public key, multiply by our secret scalar, and then we have some kind of exchange function, so some kind of key exchange. So there's really uh, nothing more than a simple Diffie-Hellman. Um, so what did we actually implement? So we used the godry schost curve, um, which is a genus two hyperelliptic curve. It's defined over a very nice finite field. So it's this FQ, where Q is two to the power 127 minus one, which is a prime, um, which has a really nice shape. Um, so this curve has a Jacobian, uh, which you can simply define, and it has a Kummer surface, which you can also define by its identifying points in their inverses. Um, and the point I wanna make here is that um, so I don't want you to read all these operation counts, but the idea is that you can very easily just express all these operations in number of operations on the finite field. So you can see that it's very uh, straightforward to make all of this constant time. Uh, like we have an addition function on the Jacobian, which we need basically only in verification. Um, and then we have the projection function, which takes a constant number of operations. Then there's this X double adds, which is basically the function underlying scalar multiplication on the Coomer. Um, so it's basically doing an X double and an X at the same time, which you can do. Uh, so if you do this, you, you get some efficiency. Um, and then there's this recovery function, uh, which goes back to Jacobian from the Coomer, which is reasonably expensive. Um, but since the Coomer operations are so much better than the Jacobian ones, it's, it's kind of worth it. Um, right, so finally, some notes on finite field arithmetic. Um, so the first platform we in implement our things on is the AVR at Mega. So this is a family of 8-bit microcontrollers. Um, so what is really important is that we need uh, big integer multiplications and squarings. So we can represent our elements um, using 128 bits since they are field elements uh, over a prime field uh, 2 to the power 127 minus 1. Um, so here we kind of cheat. So there's this implementation by Hooter and Schwabe um, where they use 256 by 256 uh, big integer multiplication and they use Karatsuba. So they use three level Karatsuba and they use uh, multiplication and two level Karatsuba um, squaring. And by the way Karatsuba works is that uh, it reduces it down to uh, a couple of, so 256 by 256 reduces down to a couple of 128 by 128 bit multiplications or squarings. Um, and since they already highly optimized this, um, there's really no reason not just to use uh, their multiplication techniques directly and squaring techniques. Um, so this reduces the level of Karatsuba we do by one. So instead we have uh, two level Karatsuba multiplication and uh, one level Karatsuba squaring. Um, so on top of that, we need some kind of reduction since we're working in a field. Um, and this prime has a very nice shape again. So we have basically two to the power 128 is congruent to two modular prime. So whenever we do a big integer multiplication, we have 128 bits number overflow. We can multiply by two and add it to the bottom. Um, and that's already enough for our reduction. Um, so combining this, we get uh, field multiplication and squarings. Um, so one property of this Coomer surface that we are using, so the Coomer surface of the godry schost curve, is that uh, it has a lot of small constants. So for some efficiency gain, we can define a separate multiplication by constant function. Um, so that's 16 by 128 bits. Um, and finally, we have an inversion, which is just uh, an exponentiation based on Euler's theorem, um, which therefore is also a constant time. Um, so the second platform is the ARM Cortex M0. So this is basically, the idea is the same. It's a 32-bit microcontroller. So instead we have four 32-bit words. Again, we have one bit redundancy, which is uh, very nice for implementation, which makes additions and subtractions easier to implement. Um, and again, uh, not by coincidence, there's another uh, 256 by 256 bits big integer multiplication implementation by, uh, by Dual and some others. Um, here they use three level carat suba multiplication and squaring, so we lift out their 128 by 128 bit, uh, big integer multiplication and squaring, uh, and we are left with two level uh, carat suba multiplication and two level uh, carat suba squaring. 
and reduction and multiplication by constant and inversions are done um, exactly in the same way. Right, so I have quite some time. Um, so for results and comparison, uh, so on the AVR at Mega, uh, I wanna emphasize that I'm really comparing scalar multiplications here. So all the other implementations have not implemented full schemes, so not full Diffie-Hellman or full signatures, they only implement scalar multiplication. So I want to compare our Kummer scalar multiplication whenever they use key exchange and our Jacobian scalar multiplication whenever they use uh, signatures because that's what you need for, for the scheme. Um, so how well did we do? Well, the fastest implementation out there for key exchange was basically uh, the implementation by Dual et al. who implement curve 25519. Um, basically, we reduced the number of cycles by 32%, um, but we also almost half the code size and uh, we have the, the, uh, the stack usage, um, which is really nice, or even the stack usage is even much more, so almost by 80%. Um, so for signatures, there's the implementation by uh, Wenger, Unterlugauer, and Werner. Um, basically there we reduce the number of flux cycles uh, by 71%, uh, but we do I increase uh, stack usage a bit, um, while the code size is, is kind of similar. Um, and there's one other implementation out there which really implements full signatures. So it's by Nascimento, Lopez, and the Hub, um, where they do uh, at the SA signature is using ADS2519. Um, so there, we almost half the number of flux cycles, um, and we also reduce the stack usage compared to them. Um, and they do not report code size, so uh, we cannot actually compare those. Um, so on the other platform, the ARM Cortex-M0, again, only comparing scalar multiplication. Um, so for key exchange, again, dual at Hull have the fastest by a curve 2519 implementation. Um, we reduce the number of clock cycles by 20, 27%, and we have code size uh, and stack usage, so there we are doing much better. Um, for signatures, uh, it's again uh, Werner, Unterlugauer, and Wenger, where we uh, reduce the number of clock cycles by 75%, um, although we again increase code size and, uh, and stack usage, and uh, that was already it, so thanks for your attention.